Danmark er altså ikke et indvandringsland. Danmark er danskernes fædreland, og selvfølgelig kan vi hjælpe nogen, skal vi hjælpe nogen i perioder, hvor de har behov for det, men udgangspunktet må være, at når de ikke længere har hjælpbehov, så skal de hjem. Danmark is the first country in the EU to revoke the resident permits of Syrian refugees. Nu er ikke kun, at der er bomber. Vi flygtede fra forfyldelser og fysiske tatorer og krigen. I'm here to show my support for the Syrian refugees. Authorities claim that the Syrian capital, Damascus, and its surrounding provinces are no longer dangerous enough to justify offering refugees from there the right to remain in Denmark. While parts of Syria have not witnessed fighting and active hostilities since 2018, a report by Human Rights Watch, published in October 2021, found that Syria is not safe for return. The 72-page report found that refugees who returned to Syria from Lebanon and Jordan between 2017 and 2021 faced grave human rights abuses and persecutions at the hands of Syrian government and affiliated militias. What Human Rights Watch has documented is that when Syrian refugees return to areas that are held by the government in Syria, including Damascus and Damascus countryside, they do face a whole host of human rights violations, starting with arbitrary arrests and harassment at the checkpoints that may lead to extrajudicial executions or torture and mistreatment, all the way to violations of their economic, social and cultural rights, including their right to food, their right to water, their right to electricity. The Human Rights Watch findings are consistent with those of other human rights organizations, including Amnesty International and the UN Commission of Inquiry on Syria. All have documented arbitrary arrests, detention, torture and ill treatment, involuntary and enforced disappearances and summary executions. Despite these reports, Denmark is stripping Syrian refugees of their temporary resident permits and sending them to return centers. Authorities are going so far as to offering refugees money to go back and establish a life in Syria. We asked Marie Karup, a Danish politician from the Danish People's Party, how many Syrian refugees she expects would be sent back. All the people here, they escape from, they have stories with the regime there and uh, they, they don't have guarantee for us to go there. They don't have empathy there. They don't have ambassador there. I hope that uh, the government here hear us and uh, know there is not safe for us to go with our children. Susan is one of many Syrians who fled their homes in Damascus and sought refuge in Denmark. In March 2021, her residence permit was revoked, a decision she since appealed. Many Syrians in Denmark were left facing the same situation. If their appeals fail, they will have to either return to Damascus voluntarily or be placed in return centers indefinitely. And although these return centers have opened doors, the restrictive legal status of those admitted there leaves them vulnerable and unable to work or study freely. Du siger, yes, vi kommer til at se familier sidde på udrejsecentre sandsynligvis en meget lang periode, fordi de ikke vil tage tilbage til et land, hvor du siger, vi vil ikke samarbejde med regimet, for det kan vi. Nej, det håber jeg da bestemt ikke. Jeg håber da, at de mennesker de beslutter sig for at efterleve dansk lovgivning og respektere den beslutning, en dommer har truffet, og så sætter sig på et fly og tager imod de skrøse tilbud, de danske skal og rejse dem om at etablere sig i deres hjemland, og glæde sig over, at de har haft for... et utroligt flot forhold i Danmark, mens de har været, øh, haft beskyttelse, i modsætning til deres landsmænd, som ikke kunne rejse igennem utallige sikre lande og slå sig ned i velfærd. Ja, og du siger, at de skal rejse tilbage til et regime, som Danmark ikke vil legitimere. Ja, det er jo rigtigt. The whole concept is to put pressure on people to leave Denmark. That can definitely lead to a discussion about whether withdrawing refugee status already in itself is a violation uh, because people are put into this very difficult situation in the return centers. They're not allowed to work anymore. They're not allowed to study. The children, they can go to school, but they are taken from their normal school into a different kind of school. 
So there's definitely a legal discussion about whether you could argue that that in itself is a violation of Article 8 of the European Convention, meaning the right to private life and, and family life. I don't think you would get the European Court of Human Rights to say it's a violation of Article 3 in itself, uh, because the people are not actually returned forcibly to Syria for the time being. Even if Denmark doesn't actively pick up Syrians and return them to Syria, this idea of putting on them enough pressure that it's considered a coercive okay. return would also be in violation of Denmark's legal obligations. This has nothing to do with the reality on the ground, and it has more to do with uh, Denmark's internal domestic politics, um, anti-refugee sentiments among among the public. So the idea that the government is 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 taking what appears to be a politically motivated decision, um, in contravention really of the facts on the ground, and potentially in contravention of international law, is really problematic. As countries in the region and beyond continue to promote returns, despite the UNHCR's official position and numerous findings, this Syria remains unsafe. Denmark has set a dangerous precedent from within the European Union by removing the temporary protection status of people from Damascus and the Damascus countryside, leaving the fates of millions of Syrian refugees all over the world in question. Countries should not prematurely return Syrian refugees to Syria. Syria is not safe. More needs to be done to hold Syrian government officials accountable. More needs to be done to ensure that there is respect for human rights within Syria before these countries push refugees out, before they normalize, before they want to sort of turn the page and pretend everything is back to normal. Otherwise, you're, we're going to continue to see refugee flows. We're going to continue to see instability in Syria.